This is the Trump Breaking News Network. Here's what's happening. Watch, MSNBC host makes humiliating attempt to undo Trump victory. Fails miserably. By Joe Saunders. For a mainstream media liberal, desperate times call for desperate measures. And few liberals seem more desperate these days than MSNBC's Andrea Mitchell, who took up valuable airtime during an interview with former Pennsylvania Governor Ed Rendell trying to come up with a way to overturn the will of the American electorate. But the straw Mitchell was grasping at was brittle indeed, Rendell's priceless reaction showed it. Citing a New York Magazine report about claims that thousands of votes in the normally Democrat redoubts of Michigan, Pennsylvania and Wisconsin had likely been manipulated or hacked to produce a Donald Trump victory, Mitchell asked Rendell if Democrats could still mount a challenge to Trump's presidency before the Electoral College meets in mid-December to certify the results of the November 8 vote. In effect, the vehemently pro-Hillary news anchor begged Rendell to give her some shred of optimism, some glimmer of hope that her candidate might somehow pull out a win. With Michigan's 16 electoral votes only recently awarded to Trump because the state's vote was that close, Trump holds an electoral college lead of 306 votes to Clinton's 232, according to USA Today. Unfortunately for Mitchell, one of the sources cited in the New York Magazine report published his own article on Medium.com that destroyed the very premise that computer hacking had turned the election. Even if he hadn't, the idea would have been ludicrous. Since 270 electoral college votes are required to win the presidency, Clinton would not only have to unwind the Trump win in Michigan, she would also have to take back other states Trump has already won. That would only be possible if there were a recount, an idea Mitchell seemed to find appealing. If there were any doubt about the answer Mitchell was looking for, a glance at the wording should make it clear she was teeing the well-known Democrat up for a blast at the results. If you look at the margins, governor, in Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin, she would need all three states. Look at that margin in Pennsylvania. Almost 69,000 votes, Mitchell said. Is there any way you could imagine her suddenly reversing that she would win Pennsylvania? Well, anyway leaves the field pretty wide open for a sympathetic answer, but Rendell didn't bite. Still, he didn't give Mitchell's question the answer she wanted. Uh, no, Andrea, I cannot imagine it, and neither can anybody with an ounce of sense. This statistical survey raises questions, he said. But, boy, it's a real long shot. I wouldn't do an election challenge unless I found in district after district that there was a significant difference between what the actual vote of the machine was and what the reported vote was. After Mitchell herself acknowledged that the Department of Homeland Security had found that hacking local election computer systems is virtually impossible, because they are not connected to the global internet, she still pressed Trendle for an answer that could lead to a new result. Drawing a picture of the disappointment Hillary supporters felt after Clinton conceded the election by phone to Trump in the early hours of November 9, Mitchell implied the result was more or less forced by an Obama White House that didn't want the election marred by court challenges. And that last part of Rendell's answer is key. Getting the transfer of power between presidencies fast was an essential part of the framers' plans for the country. The initial date of swearing in a new president was March, the earliest the roads could be expected to be passable during the early days of the Republic after the winter snows. The 20th Amendment changed the inauguration date to January 20, as modern means of travel made the presidential transition less dependent on the new president's ability to get to the swearing-in ceremony. The point here is that getting the new government into office fast was something the founders envisioned at the outset of the country, and it's just as important that the new administration be allowed to move into place as quickly as an orderly process allows. And an orderly process, as the nation learned to its dismay in the Democrat-induced chaos of 2000, does not allow for spurious challenges to the new president's inauguration. No matter how desperate Andrea Mitchell and the Democrats get. This has been the Trump Breaking News Network. Please subscribe and share to stay up to date on the latest news about our president. Be informed.